and welcome back into the Tiger Kickoff Show presented by the Columbia Missouri. And I'm your host, Harrison Vatnick from KMU8 Sports, joined alongside the beat writers of the Mizzou football team, Wendell Shepard, Adam Ryerson, Brandon Haynes. We're back after a one show hiatus. Good to be back, and it's almost time for another Tigers game. How are we doing? It feels like it's been like a year since we've yeah, been here. Yeah, just one show, and it feels like it's been a year. I missed it. Yeah, how, how, was, it? Uh, how was media days for the. Uh... It was, it was good to see Dennis and the boys. They're, they're April 6th, April 8th. If you don't know those dates yet, you're going to know them very soon. Those are the, the day of the Final Four in the National Championship. It's, all right. Oh, all wow. those guys are all talking right. about. But it yeah. style points as usual. Absolutely. Got the Pit Vipers, Adam Ryerson's. I look great in them. Almost as good as him. He looks pretty good, I too. Well, everyone we saw good. Wendell in him, though. Wendell looked, That's Wendell looked pretty good. Look yeah. good, feel good, play good. Absolutely. That's an Adam Ryerson quote right there. And Tigers were looking plain pretty good in the second half last week against Kentucky the 38 to 21 comeback in Lexington just the fourth time in the past decade that Missouri has overcome a two touchdown deficit to win a game ironically all the other ones came against Arkansas its team showed some fight the defense had maybe their best half of football all season long now the team is six and one back in the AP top 25 at number 20 in the country but a big game against SEC East rival South Carolina for homecoming in Columbia, or Columbia at least, we'll get more on that later. Uh, Drinkwitz undefeated for homecomings through his first couple years here in Columbia. How can they build off that win against Kentucky last Saturday, Wendell, and then now move forward into South Carolina this week? I think you had it. You had it on defense a very, very rough first two drives, but go after that. I think the three quarters we saw from the Mizzou defense were the best they've played this entire season. They, you know, were forcing turnovers, were consistently in the backfield. I think if you keep that play going, this team is scary. Adam, what do you see on Saturday that they can build, move forward um, in the season with? For me, it's the offense. Strinkwitz said after the game that the offense didn't have their best game, but they were efficient. The defense was able to put them in some short fields, and they were able to get to the red zone and score. And while they may have had some struggles early on in third downs, in this season, one place that they've been efficient the entire season is the red zone. So far this season, they're 30 for 31 on scoring in the red zone with 21 touchdowns, 11 rushing, 9 passing. On the other 9, they've kicked field goals, so they've been really good in that department. And if they can keep capitalizing and their scoring opportunities, I think that Mizzou will be able to keep up with the best offenses in the SEC. And their defense, if like Wendell said, if they can continue to play like they did last week, they can keep up with the best defenses in the SEC as well. What do you think is leading to this red zone success? You mentioned only one time all season they've gone in the red zone and not scored points at all. Is it a Curry Moore thing? Is it just smarter decision making from Brady Cook? You know, why is the team succeeding so well when they get to the plus 20 yard line and forward? I think it's a combination of those two things. The one thing that I will say is Luther Burden last week was pretty silent. He had one seven yard rush and then he had two catches for 15 yards, I believe. Um, but on Brady Cook's touchdown run, they ran the same touchdown play, uh, the kind of jet uh, outside zone to Brady Cook, and they faked a reverse to Burden. They ran that same play against Kansas State. Same thing happened. Two defenders bid against Kansas State, paved a path from the path for them to win that game. Against Kentucky, three defenders bit on Burden. So I think that maximizing their player personnel and knowing what teams are going to target uh, on their offense has really been helping them. And Kirby Moore's been doing a great job calling plays to put his players in a successful position. And then also Theo Wiest. I mean, he's been he's, awesome. Touchdown Theo. What, five absolutely. of the last six games he finds the end zone. He's yeah. awesome. So I think uh, all those combinations of things just equals great success in the red zone. And that's what the Tigers have been doing all season. Brandon, what do you have for moving forward for this team that they can take away from the win against Kentucky? Yeah, Harrison, you pointed out before the show, only the fourth time in the past 10 years Mizzou's overcome a double-digit deficit to win a game. So, I mean, you just got to carry them up, that momentum that you get. You're down 14 nothing in Kentucky. Nothing is going right. I mean, you needed a spark, and then Luke Bauer obviously delivers, and we'll talk a bit about that yeah. in a little bit. But just that kind of momentum play can ultimately, ultimately be the play that defines your season. And that's a turnaround moment that could really help you, especially when you were looking down at such a big deficit, such a big hole against an SEC East team that you needed to be in order to remain in conversation for the division title. So it's just that could be a moment they just need to carry that momentum forward as they face another team in South Carolina. Now moving forward to South Carolina, they're two and five on paper. I think they're better than the, the record says. They blew a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter against Florida just last weekend. They have already played North Carolina and Georgia. They led Georgia the half. Mm -hmm. Those are two top 10 teams in the whole country right now. What are some of the matchups right now between the Tigers and the Gamecocks that you think could make a major impact in this game, Wendell? Uh, this is a matchup similar to one we talked about a few weeks ago when Mizzou played LSU. Um, Mizzou's passing attack versus South Carolina's secondary. Um, we talked about how 
poorly LSU secondary performed. South Carolina is, is the worst in the country. As far as um, pass yards allows go, they are allowing 321.7 passing yards a game. Total yards is over 450 yards. That's not great. I think if um, Mizzou gets back on track off the kind of rough offensive showing that they had against Kentucky, especially passing the ball, I think they'll have a field day. Do you think it'll be a lot of Luther Burden specifically, or maybe another game where it's guys throughout? We see Theo East, Mookie Cooper, Marquise Johnson, even the tight ends get involved. I think we've seen a, we, we see a, a big day for Luther again. Um, he, he had a big day against LSU, and if you watched some, some of South Carolina's games earlier this year, especially um, this past week against Florida, they receivers had a ton of space, yeah. and Luther's going to thrive in that, in that open space, and he's going to make guys miss. And... Um, Adam, what matchup do you have your eyes on? For me, it's the receiver on the other side of the field. It's Xavier Leggett against Mizzou's secondary. Leggett is arguably one of the best receivers in the nation. He comes in as the number three receiver in terms of yards this year in the SEC with 716. Only 37 receptions. He's averaging 19.4 yards per catch, which is unbelievable. And he's a big play machine. 32 plus yards on a catch in every single game this season, with his longest being a 76-yard touchdown. And I think the thing that really stands out about him the most is he's 6'3", 227 pounds, but he is faster than every single player on the field. On that 76-yard touchdown run, he reached a top speed of 22.3 miles per hour, which is faster than Tyreek Hill's fastest run this year as the fastest ball carrier in the NFL. So I think that Missouri is going to have a really tough time dealing with him. Uh, and I think that the secondary is going to have to build off of what they did last week. Um, they went up against a pretty dynamic passing attack in Kentucky, not nearly as good as South Carolina's in my opinion, but they were able to get two turnovers and then their DBs forced and recovered another fumble in the game. So if they can continue to wreak havoc uh, against the uh, South Carolina passing attack with getting pressure and forcing quick decisions, I think that they'll have an opportunity to get more of those turnovers in this game. And I think that... Missouri's secondary is already kind of battle-tested this season. We, we talked about Malik Neighbors, that matchup, for so long that right. we can. Neighbors probably is going to win the Blitnikoff Award as of right now. We kind of gassed up Vanderbilt's receivers a little bit going into that week. They had a decent week. But even against Kentucky, we talked about Tavion Robinson and Dane Key. Those guys didn't even have the greatest of games against Missouri's secondary. That Part of that was the pressure they were getting on Leary. But, you know, this – I know Leggett is one of the best receivers in all the country, and especially the SEC – but I think that these guys have already kind of been battle-tested against good receiving crews. I think that, you know, they'll be a little more prepared for that game. And then it gets even easier, you know, when he has to go play Tennessee's receivers or Florida and Ricky Pearsall and guys like that. This is, it's yeah. the SEC. You're going to play as good receivers every single week. Yeah, and they had their best outing last week without Ennis Rakestraw. Yeah. So I think that is, he's what's... questionable coming into this okay. game. Um, he's still dealing with his groin injury. So if he's able to go, then, I mean, that's just another weapon that you have on defense. So Brandon, your matchups involve the coaches in this one. Tell us about Eli Drinkwitz and South Carolina recently. Yeah, Eli Drinkwitz, 4-0 all-time against South Carolina as a head coach. He He's beat them the last three times as Tigers head coach. Beat him at Appalachian State yeah. at, at, as a head coach there. So he obviously is bringing that success in. Um, I think also you got to just look at Mizzou's homecoming success. They haven't lost a homecoming game since 2016. There's something about playing on that day that just kind of comes with it. But Eli Drink Drinkwitz just has the success against South Carolina that can kind of carry him. On the opposite side, Shane Beamer is limping into this game yeah. physically. Um, <laughs> he oh broke his God, foot at, so after good. the game um, after the game against Florida and, and anger riled kick so we'll see kind of how he is but obviously that program is reeling they need some confidence so maybe they come in um one interesting note is that in 2013 when mizzou was undefeated south carolina came into columbia yeah. on homecoming and oh yes banned. if you're south carolina that was the call on the broadcast where mm -hmm. it was 17 nothing and they yeah they came back and won that game they basically popped their national championship hopes exactly so mizzou lost that one so if you're looking back at that game and i'll kind of talk about it a little bit in a minute but that's just something to be weary of as you kind of enter this contest that you don't want to get caught looking ahead um, but you do have a bye week next week so you just got to get through these next three four days and for Mizzou and you're chilling. Now we'll now turn to what our writers are writing about this week but as Brandon just mentioned in their features Wendell I'll turn over to you these, news, these stories will also be up in the Missourian starting on Friday you're talking about the hero from last week Luke Bauer I'm not sure how many Missouri fans knew his name he, that's a name now that I think Tiger fans will never forget after what happened against Kentucky in the 39-yard touchdown pass to Marquise Johnson. Tell us a little bit about Luke Bauer. 
Yeah, Luke Bauer is, you know, it's not very often that you talk about punters, and then we're talking, we've been talking about special teamers a lot this year. You know, he was the holder for the Mevis kick against K-State, and then had the touchdown pass um, on the fake punt against Kentucky. He's a five-sport athlete going back to childhood. He's played every sport, he's really good at a lot of them, but chose to be a punter. Um, and he, he spent several years here, here in Mizzou, he's finally getting a shot, and he's made some pretty big plays. Yeah, I mean, none bigger than I think that one, unless yeah. he has another fake punt touchdown, which the way they've been aggressive, might see it again. I don't know. Me. Adam, you were writing about a guy we just talked about, Xavier Leggett, you know, in the matchup that Missouri has it with him this weekend. Tell us a little bit about Xavier. Well, I got to coach. I got to talk to his coach, um, Justin Stepp, wide receiver coach for South Carolina, and he just gave me some more detailed information on what he brings to the table. Um, he started with his first four seasons. He is now a fifth-year senior. Uh, he started his first four th seasons as mainly a special teams guy. He has always been a punter or a, a gunner on punt and kickoff, and then he's returning for them at the kick return position. Got a touchdown last year against A and M. Um, and he had a huge bowl game last season in the Gator Bowl against Notre Dame. He had seven catches for 78 yards and two touchdowns. And Stepp's given him some very high praise. Coach Stepp has coached two uh, first-round draft picks, and he says Leggett's better than both of them. And it's really high praise considering that those two receivers are Traylon Burks and DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah. So he says that Leggett can do things that those guys couldn't do. Uh, and if that's on full display against Missouri, like I said before, they're going to have a big challenge trying to limit him. And look at the guy who could fly up draft boards when we get to April yep. and mock draft Absolutely. season and all that fun stuff. Brandon, you're writing about the state of Missouri's program. This is a year that you know we kind of really hoped that they could possibly have. They're 6-1. and one. This is a team that has lost so many close games in years past. Now they're pulling out those wins. Where's the program at right now? Yeah, I think if we look back real quick to the beginning of the season, the conversation was surrounding the quarterback competition. Who would do this? Who would do that? And obviously, I think Eli Drinkwitz and Shane Beamer kind of stood in the same spot, possibly on the hot seat. Just whether they had bad seasons, it, it could derail for both of them. And so at this point in time, obviously after a 6-1 and start, Eli Drinkwitz looking up. Entering the season, Mizzou was... 47 and 51 in their last eight seasons, going back to 20, 2014. Four of those losses were bowl games. So really, a 47-47, yeah. 500 team. Just going back to that that 2014 season, the last time they were really up top in the in the college football elite conversation. But now they've kind of taken taken that step forward. Obviously, ranked number 20 now for the first time since that season. Um, and it's just uh, they're they're kind of making those steps there. So I just kind of looked and did a deep dive into kind of what that's ha how that's happened, and obviously the STP uh, motto that they've STP. had this year. Well, now before we do our game picks, another edition of Tiger Trivia. Our oh. Wendell, you've a lot of trivia today for you. Yes, <laughs> uh, as you were mentioning before the show, this one has to do with something that's similar between Missouri and South Carolina, the city that they play their football in. Columbia, it's a little Columbia, Missouri versus Columbia, South Carolina. This is honestly a copy and paste from what Chase Madison did last year, twisting up a little bit um, the previous host of this show. So we have about six questions for you guys. It's on my phone, not on my notes. We'll start with the higher population in the 2020 census between Columbia, Missouri and Columbia, South Carolina. Or is this like a group thing or are we all doing our own? You get an individual. Okay. Um, I'm going to go Columbia, Missouri. Okay. I'm going to go... South Carolina. I go Columbia, Missouri. Columbia, Missouri, 1,126. One, 1, <laughs> Read it, numbers are hard. <laughs> 126,254. Columbia, South Carolina, 136,632. So about 10,000 more in South Carolina. So like Harry, undefeated. Oh, yeah, not, not um, anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> sour, sour, sour subject. Higher elevation between Columbia, Missouri and Columbia, South Carolina. It's got to be South Carolina. I was going to go Columbia, Missouri. Missouri. Columbia, Missouri, 761. Columbia, South Carolina, 302. Wow. Let's go. Wow. Warmer temperature when I made this at 8.51 a.m. Was this today? This was this morning when I did this trivia. Which one of the warmer temperature at 8.51 this morning? It's kind of cool this morning. Columbia, South Carolina. South Carolina. I'll, get, I'll mix it up with Missouri. Columbia, Missouri, 53. Columbia, South Carolina, 58. Wow. Five degrees warmer there. South Carolina. More square miles in their it. city. Ooh. Columbia, Missouri. I'm going to go Missouri. <laughs> Which one? Missouri. Columbia, South Carolina. Columbia, Missouri, 67.45. Columbia, South Carolina, 140.68. Wow. Much bigger. Wow. I'm Higher, okay. Missouri is that You'll small. know the answer to one of these, but can help you get the other one. Higher area code number. So you, you should know the area code yes. here, which is 573. The South, is Columbia, South Carolina is higher or lower? Lower. 
That's analytics right there. Higher. Higher. Columbia, Missouri, 573. Columbia, South Carolina, 803. Oh, let's go. Much higher. Last one. <laughs> More expensive college tuition, South Carolina or Missouri? For standard, not in state, just oh, yeah. a standard number that was I saw on the website. I'm going to say South Carolina. I'm going to say Missouri. Missouri. Columbia, South Carolina, or the University of South Carolina, <laughs> 33928 Missouri, 31970 wow. Just $2,000 separating those two. I knew that. Yeah, right. smart. Right. Wendell, Wendell looked that up <laughs> earlier. I think he <laughs> may have cheated in that one. That's our Tiger trivia. We'll definitely have some more of that as the season goes on. We'll now do our game picks. Wendell, Columbia, Missouri, or Columbia, South Carolina? <laughs> um, Columbia, Missouri. I think Mizzou improves to 7-1. and one. Adam? I'm yeah. going to take uh, the Tigers as well. I talked to Alan Cole. There will be a Q&A piece in Tiger kickoff as well. I'm going to go with the same score prediction that he did, 31-21. to 21, uh, Tigers take it home. Brandon? I'm going to go ahead and go... Columbia, Missouri as okay. well. Uh, retaining the Mayor's Cup, uh, I think Mizzou's just going to take care of business. Um, as far as score, I think it'll be like 34-14. I think defense wow. steps up again. Okay, I know I got my undefeated streak end last week with the Kentucky loss. Heartbreaking. Two years ago, when these two played, here in Columbia, I predicted the exact score 31-28. I'm going to predict the exact score again. 33-28. Missouri wins. Close. Close. Closer than the experts think. Travis put it up. Four for four on the Tigers again. That looks nice. First time we've wow. had four for four. I guess it's Vanderbilt a couple weeks ago. I don't, I don't see the zero. Oh, I you're really far. I anymore. see twos next to one, two, three of you. I only see uh, <laughs> six and one next to somebody. So keep hey, talking trash. Get, one and oh every week. Hey, if one I go 11 and one, that qualifies me for the SEC championship. Ten and two, you guys might be looking at the Citrus Bowl. I don't know. <laughs> well, if, we're, if, we're, if we're in the West, we're safe. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, a, that's a good point. Hey, Bam LSU in the West. I don't know. Two weeks from now, Missouri-Georgia could be for the East. That's true. One game at a time, go. One game One at a time. <laughs> we'll be back next Monday to recap the Tigers in South Carolina, all the top plays from there, and everything from that game. We will see you later next week on the Tiger Kickoff Show.